we? I think it's a riparian zone. A riparian zone? Riparian zone. Yeah, you're right. This does look like a transitional area from an aquatic to a terrestrial ecosystem. <laughs> Not to mention the vegetation and recruitable debris around. I really do love the heterogeneous landscape of species diversity and successional age here. Yeah, it is so a mosaic. So a mosaic. I'm noticing a lot of scouring of the stream banks. Do you think this could have something to do with disturbance? I've heard this is called a pulse disturbance, and that increased water level and higher velocity during annual flood events cause this. Does this have something to do with the large amount of deposited sediments where those grasses and flowers are? Yeah, deposition enables plants to reestablish after a disturbance. What's that called again? Secondary succession. Oh, so that's why those trees are so small compared to other parts of the riparian zone. So, this area must not have been disturbed for a while. Wait, why do you say that? Well, succession continues to move forward, allowing for older vegetation and greater diversity in the absence of disturbance, which we see here. True. Oh, look at that sweet tree fort! But look at the invasive grass, and my favorite huckleberry plants aren't around anymore. Oh, don't worry, they'll come back. No, human development is not like a pulse disturbance. It's permanent and pushes the ecosystem away from a natural baseline. This is called a press disturbance. That's why we are seeing the invasive grass and not the native riparian vegetation. This place looks so much more complex than where the tree fort was. It's even more shaded. Yeah, look at all the different successional stages in the riparian vegetation. And the awesome mushroom on the large woody debris. The woody debris is everywhere, even the stream. But isn't that good? Because isn't it the primary agent in forming pools? It is. It slows the average velocity just behind the wood, allowing for pools to form where sediment and organic matter can accumulate. Aw, look at the critters coming out to eat the leaves. I didn't think about the leaves being important to the stream ecosystem. Oh yeah, they're really important. These critters are actually benthic macroinvertebrates, and the leaves are used not only for food, but refuge. Also, young salmon and other fish depend on the BMIs for food. So, what will happen to them if it floods? Well, I imagine all the large woody debris and organic matter gets washed downstream. But where does it go? It looks like the riparian vegetation builds the floodplain by catching large woody debris and sediment, while the roots also stabilize the stream banks. Oh, that poor fish got displaced in the intermittent stream. <laughs> it's alright, it'll make good eagle food. <laughs>